So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 14. Today is August the 11th, 2022. And kind of the, uh, the, the topic for um, Energy Play Shop 14 is how to know. Because last week we kind of talked about how to grow our sixth sense. So, I, I, so this week is kind of a, a continuation on that. And I'm going to focus on things like how how can we how do we um, actually find ways to to know things that we don't ordinarily know. So um, let's. So the agenda for today, I'm not going to even show it because it's very simple. Is we're going to do a um, kind of question and answer first and welcome question and answer if you have any any comments questions about previous um, workshops then it's, you can definitely raise them here and then after that we'll do a present um, just getting present meditation and then we'll go right into how to know so first thing first just asking opening up the floor for anyone who have any questions about what we covered last time, if you guys do, or if you guys are doing any um, exercise to start to hone your sixth sense, if you come across any questions, then now is the time to raise them. Not really, okay. In that case, um, I will, we'll, let's move on then. The next thing is really to do the, the present meditation. So let's just take a deep breath in. And let it all go. And as you let go, just allow your shoulders and your body to simply relax. And then just breathe in again slowly. And allow yourself to fully inflate your lungs. And then just slowly release your breath. And as you release your breath, just allow your body to become more relaxed. And let's do this all together one more time. Just breathe in slowly and fully. And then just slowly release and let go of your body. Allow your body to simply come into a peaceful, calm state and continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing for a little while longer. And as you follow your breath, use your breathing to set the intention as you breathe in is to bring in all parts of yourself back inside your body. Because during the day, we think of things, we set our attention outside. And right now, the intention is to bring all of our attention back inside our body. And as you breathe out, let go of anything and everything that is taking you away from being present to yourself, to your body, to all the other things that are going on inside yourself. So come back to yourself. And also set the intention to call back all parts of you and also allow yourself to be 
energetically linked up with the highest vibration version of you that is possible for you to get in touch with in this moment. And continue to breathe in more of the self to come back to you, come back to this moment, come back to being present with all of you in this moment. And on the out breath, just let go of anything and everything that is still tugging at your attention. Any thoughts, any worries about yesterday, tomorrow, just let them go. Just be here with yourself in this moment. And when you feel more solid, more within yourself, more present in this moment, and you can open your eyes again and come back. So welcome back. Let's just jump into <clears throat> the topic this evening is really about how to know, how to know the unknowable things that we don't know. For example, what's going to happen in September or what's going to happen a um, week from now, we don't know. So how do you know things that you don't know? I have a few suggestions. One of them is um, just to remind everybody is, is that um, knowing, so the sixth sense, because we all have this ability to know everything. Why do we have this? Um, maybe I should actually just give a little explanation of why do I think that we, why do I keep saying that this is a natural ability? Why do I, what evidence do I have that we can know things that we consciously don't think we know? In this moment, for example, I don't know what's gonna happen in the world in September. Why, why do I think that I can get that information that is something that is knowable, that no matter what it is that I want to know that, that I don't know right now, it's actually something that's doable. How can I be so sure? Why? Because there is a theory in quantum physics. It is called um, quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement is actually, what it says is that um, two or more objects that has been entangled in a certain way that um, in a certain state that no matter where they are um, after that entanglement, no matter where they are, no matter how much space or time is in between them, they are still energetically linked. There is still a linkage. So that is the basis of why I, I think that we actually can know why, because we all came from one. It's, you, you've probably heard of a, a theory called Big Bang Theory. Uh, um, I am not a scientist. And I know that there are a lot of other theories uh, that um, is more current than the Big Bang Theory. But in essence then is that Spiritually, we um, actually all came from one big endless, limitless 
entity in which some people call God, some people call creator source. We are all part of that. And which means that at some point beyond space and time, we're all just one. So, and now in this, um, in this reality, we are living under the illusion that we are not one anymore, that we are, let's say I have this body, so I am, I am this um, discreet and unique person. And then someone else, let's say, my son Samuel is another um, discreet and unique person and we are not connected. And my mother or my next door neighbor or my landlady, because we, we look like we have several, we have a different body. We have unique, discreet and disconnected body. So we think that we are no longer um, actually related to one another. However, if you actually look at quantum theory and also um, really understand where matter, where creation actually come from, comes from nothing, it comes from thought. So we all came from one. And because of that, that even though now we are under the illusion that we are separate and discrete entities, but actually at some point beyond space time, we are all one. So that's why anything and everything actually is quantumly entangled together. And because we are quantumly entangled, if we actually pay attention, if we actually um, are able to follow the energy, track the energy, then there is a possibility that we can know anything, whether it is, for example, our concept of time right now is that time is a linear fashion. However, we already know scientifically, we already know that is time is not linear. So it is just that at present reality at our consciousness level, we perceive time as being linear. However, at a higher level of consciousness, time is no longer linear. So, which means that it doesn't matter whether it's an event that's happened yesterday or tomorrow or a thousand years from now, we can actually from a, um, we can actually access that event from a different consciousness. So that's, so in this way, this is how I know for sure that we can know anything and everything we can, that, that we have the ability to know because there really is no time. If I think that I cannot know what's going to happen in September, that's just my, um, that's just an illusion because from a different level of consciousness, September, August, it's all um, simply a continuum. And when we, um, when we access that consciousness, that higher consciousness, we will be able to find out what's going on at whatever time that we wanted to, to know. So that's what I mean. That's why I am so certain that we can know. The, the, I think the more important question is, how can we get to the point of knowing? Because right now, we're under the illusion that we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen to us. We have no idea that we actually do know. It's just that we're playing this hide and seek with ourselves. So how do we get back to knowing? So 
I have actually come up with a couple of ways to really facilitate. How I come up with this is actually I kind of reverse engineer of how I, like when I, in, in the past, how did I come to find out information that if you consciously ask me, I would say, I don't know. But when I um, tap into a, uh, an altered state of consciousness, I was able to pull information out. So I reverse engineer that. So the first thing that I offer for anyone who wants to develop their sixth sense, their um, ability to know the unknown, the first thing to do is to let go of the need to be right. Um, this is a temporary, I would say this is a temporary condition because recalling how my own journey of growing my own um, consciousness is that I really slowed myself down quite a bit by the need to be right. So the conversation in my head was like, okay, I, 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 I would try to tap into something, let's say, okay, tap into, let's say, so um, I'm trying to think of a, um, an example. One example would be like, okay, so let's say I ordered, I recently ordered a um, meditation cushion. So if I want to know, because right now I don't know when it is going to be delivered. However, I can tap into it. And, um, and let's say right now when I'm tapping into it, I'm actually saying that it's going to arrive on Tuesday. So coming Tuesday. How do I know whether I'm going to be right or wrong? I don't know. But comes next Tuesday, I would know because it either arrived or, uh, or it either arrived earlier, let's say tomorrow, or it arrived um, on Wednesday, or it actually arrived on Tuesday. I don't know that. I don't know when it's going to arrive. However, if I, right now I say it's going to arrive on Tuesday, but if it actually arrived on Monday, and I would say to myself, let's say, oh, you see, you're wrong, because it actually arrived earlier than what you think. And because you, I was wrong with that, then I must be stupid, or I must be mistaken. I must be in, I must be uh, a fraud because I can't even tell when my own package is going to arrive. And if you have these negativity, um, this internal dialogue that is negative on yourself on whether you are right or wrong, and this negativity actually would make would make it harder on yourself to become um, better, faster. It actually makes it. It actually this negativity in the past when I have talked to myself and and, and kind of berate myself and say, "See, you're wrong. You're just not good enough." So when I have those those. Um, thinking in my mind I actually got it actually slowed me down and now that I am more present to it is that when I when I really you know just tune into something and and, and kind of get a a um, prediction let's say it's kind of a prediction and I really don't put too much emphasis on whether I'm I have to be right or I have to be wrong because now my, my emphasis is on, okay, I want to verify, but I don't want to um, make myself wrong or make myself feel like I'm not good enough if I'm wrong. So I just want to know for the reason to, to, to find out whether, um, what right feels like so that I can 
it's easier for me to kind of backtrack and find out, okay, right feels like a certain way so that it it's it's like this muscle that um, the more I use it, the more I um, stay positive, the easier it is, the faster it is, this muscle is going to go stronger. So that's why the first thing that I, um, <clears throat> that I suggest is actually to give yourself permission to be wrong. And the next suggestion that really worked well for me is to prepare, is to prepare as in doing a meditation and also setting an intention to let go of what I think I know in the moment. Um, I actually have a lot of experience where I, like the first thing that came into my mind, when, let's say when I try to tap into um, let's say somebody asked me a send me a picture of a a person and ask me can you pick up you know um, something from this person and I would actually just um at first it was not easy uh, because I have this conversation that I'm not good enough and then and then when I give myself permission to be wrong then the next thing is um, I would put my own spin on it. Let's say if I like the person's, um, how the person's look. So if, if the prettier or the more handsome the person is, the, the more I would be able to associate good things with them. And the more I, let's say, don't like that, the, how the person look, I would it's easier for me to associate bad things in, um, around that person. So that is me putting on things I know on that person, my own stuff on that person. And also um, it, it could be that you know, when I was, uh, let's say certain days, I may be in a certain mood, then I would allow my own um, mood to color what it is that I pick up for the person or the event. So that's what I mean by um, prepare. Prepare myself is really to let go of where my headspace is and to let go of everything that I think I know about um, certain events or that person. Because sometimes I may be asked to um, to to get information on a person that I already know. And depending on whether I like that person or not, I may put my own stuff on it. So the, the most important thing when you're trying to pull out information from thin air to, to get to know the unknowable is really to empty yourself so that you become a um, just a clear slate for information to come in. So that's what I mean by prepare yourself. Prepare yourself by simply letting go of what I think I know about something and to really let go of um, whatever it is that I may be dealing with in that moment. So let go of my own stuff, just, just to let go of, of any emotional things that, that, that may be preoccupying my mind in that moment. So prepare. And the next thing is really opening, find an opening or a connection. So what do I mean by finding an opening and a connection. It really depends on, on what it is that I want to know. For example, if it is 
a person, then the connection could be having that person's um, picture or having that person's name or having that person's date of birth. So some information about that person or that event. If I somebody wants to ask me about an event, then the it would be good to know, you know when that event actually happened, if, if it happened in the past. For example, um, and let's say January 15th, 2021. So if there is a particular date, then uh, for that event, then, then that date would be a connection for me to zoom in on that energy. So that's what I mean by um, a connection. So what do I mean by an opening? An opening could be if it's something that is, for example, um, finding uh, how to heal somebody. I, I don't know how to heal somebody, but I, I don't know how to, I don't know what's going on in, in that person's body. So how do I get in um, a connection and opening is, is first is to really connect with the person. And then the next thing is um, to tune into what really is the most, what really catches my eye most for that person. It could be something as simple as how that person, is, um, what their hair looks like. Is it long hair or short hair? If that is the, the one thing that actually attracted me, uh, that really catches my attention about that person in that moment when I was asked to find out how to, let's say, heal or assist that person to heal. So that's what I mean by finding, finding an opening. And sometimes you may have to wait for that opening to, to come in because um, this connection and opening may not be as simple as the name. It may not be as simple as the birthday. It is, um, it may not present itself until I actually sit with that request for a while and then just do all the work in letting go of all my own stuff and also just um, be in the space of, I don't need to know, but if I were to know, what would be the first thing that comes to my mind? So that's what I mean by um, looking for that opening, waiting for that opening to come. That opening is usually something that it may not be obvious at first, but when you ask a question, and you wait for something to show up that's going to show you that that is your opening. It's not something that is easy to explain, but um, to the best of my knowledge, that's how it works out for me. For example, I just want to um, give an example is, I remember I was doing a practice with somebody um, and this lady was complaining about a um, pain in like a, a back pain. And so I was, and I was thinking of how can I assist this lady to heal? And what comes to me was actually, the image that came to me was um, a rough sea, like really, a lot of waves and um, a very 
something like stormy kind of of, of feeling and, and and visually that's what came to me was a, um, an ocean that is and and bad weather and those two come together so and the more I allow that vision or that that um, that visual cue to come to me, the more I understood is that it is a symbol. It is really symbolic to me. S symbolic, um, usually water to me is about emotions. Why? That's just my, in, that's just my own association is that the um, water is emotional. And also the idea that it's a storm. So it's not like a sea in sunny weather, but it's sea and ocean in a stormy weather. So that actually gave me the association that that person emotionally dis, like um, emotion is out of control as in a storm. That's why, that's what uh, came to me about the hill and fur back pain. So that's what I mean by um, allowing that, that opening to come. So the next thing is also to um, know my own strength. So what do I mean by that? Um, my own strength, what I know about myself is that I am a very emotional person. So I, or, or I wouldn't say I'm a very emotional person in that I am very in touch with my, I, that actually is not a good. So let's say I'm very sensitive to emotions, I'm sensitive to emotions. I'm sensitive to touch, I'm sensitive to, um, so it's more of a, um, so clear sentient is really my strength. So it's about being in touch with feelings. Feeling as in emotional feelings and also sense of touch as well. So those are things that I, um, I'm really good at. So I'm not very, uh, I'm not really a very visual person. Um, so those are not my strengths. So that's why when I, when I um, tap into the unknown, I rely more, the, the question that I ask myself most is really, how does it feel? Does it feel good or bad to me? That kind of, it's, it's the first question I would ask myself when I try to connect with an event or a person. So that's how I play to my own strength because I know that that is my strength is, is that I have a very sensitive aura. I sense energy even though I may not be consciously aware of something, but unconsciously, that is one of my um, strength. So I, that's why I will ask myself, so how does this feel energetically? How do I feel emotionally about this, the energy of this event or this person? So that's how I play to my own strength. Um, instead of relying on being able to see, because Tifu James is very um, gifted in terms of being able to see energy. So for him, when I would, I would suppose that when he um, wants to go into, tap into the unknown is to, is to tap into his visual. So clear or clairvoyant would be kind of more his strength. I'm just doing a mind read. It may not be how he does it, but that's how I, um, when I reverse engineer how I 
pull information out of the, the thin air. That's how I usually do it is to rely on the part of me that is the strongest, the, my, the, the part of my sixth sense is the strongest. So, and the other thing about um, information coming in, um, pulling in how to know the unknowable is that the information don't come in just a full picture. It does not just come in you know, one picture. Okay, this is it. I know this. No, it actually comes in bits and pieces of information. And the more I um, go back to it, to, to go into, to, to, to ask more um, information, ask more questions, the more information will come. So that's how, for me, that's how I know. So for example, um, another example is, I remember when I, this, this is another, um, in another session, I was assisting somebody to really find out what their highest self is trying to communicate with them. And so what I got was a really a feeling. So, so what I got was a feeling. I, so, and um, the feeling is somebody running. So I, supposedly it's this guy, because this, this person is a, a, a guy. So I actually, um, the visual I got was like a Roman soldier running. So that, uh, that was how I, um, the information first came to me. And um, so the first information is that I, I can, feel this person running and running and running. So there's this kind of anxiety that this person is under. And, and so I was asking, the question I asked is, how come this person is running? What is really um, going on? And this, and so what came to me was actually a traumatic experience in this person's um, when this person was younger. And so this traumatic experience actually made, uh, was so traumatic for him that his, um, his soul decided to leave. So, but his soul actually, well, didn't decide to leave and go and never come back. But his, his soul decided to not be in his body because this this constant um, running and anxiety is really making it hard for his soul to stay in his body. So a lot of this person's um, issue was because his soul is not in his body. So that's why there's a lot of um, relationship issues, um, issues at work. All of it was uh, all just related to this so not not comfortable to be in his own body. So part of the the assistance to get him uh, to really assist him to grow is to actually convince his, his soul to come back into the body. So doing that um, doing that energy work. So that's that's one of the. The, the example. So I got the bits of, I got the feeling first. And then when I asked more questions, so how come this happened? And also asked a question of how old would, uh, was, was he when this happened? So when you ask questions, then more information would come because this, this is really, for me, that's how it works for me. I don't just um, get the the whole set of information over this person at, at this age and this happened to them. That's not how the information usually come to me. It usually comes to me 
little bit at a time. And the more I ask questions, more I can download information. Perhaps there are some people out there that, that get the whole full download all in one sitting. However, for myself, that's usually how I get it, get the information is that it's like a piece of the puzzle comes in um, at a time. And the more questions I ask, and um, usually I would say more um, open-ended question I ask. It could be, let's say, I can ask how old was this person when this happened or things like, um, <clears throat> is it this lifetime or another lifetime? Or it could be that like trying to figure out what actually happened. I could, I could ask questions like, is this something that happened to, um, is it from another person? Not like a relationship issue, or is it because of an accident? So these are kind of um, different questions that you can ask in order to get more, download more information. So that's also what I want to talk about. And um, so information come in as pieces of a puzzle. So, and then ask questions. The more questions you ask, um, more information you can download. And also don't take the information coming in literally. For example, uh, I mentioned earlier that is one of the, the um, one of the session is, this lady that came in, I was working with her. I saw the um, ocean and then a storm. So if I took it literally, then I might have mistaken that, oh, that person was drowned or maybe it was, um, they have a boating incident and they, because they have to, you know, I could make up a story. However, I, I know that like I was playing with the idea that it's, it's not really, um, it's not literal. So if it's not literal, then what could a, an ocean stand for? Emotions could be one of them. Or it could be something else. What does a storm stand for symbolically? It's really something um, that is beyond our control because it is nature nature is um, doing its thing. So there's nothing we can do about it. I could have this association and that may or may not be right. So and that is um, how we, how I actually work out what actually is. And so I would just, allow the, the ask questions, allow the bits and pieces of information to come in. And I would just be patient with um, the, 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 the information that is coming in until there are enough pieces of the puzzle, until I get to a point where I feel like I have a, a good, image. So the other thing I want to uh, mention is, is through patience. So don't just jump to conclusion and say, oh, this, this, I see this, or I feel this, so it must be that. So don't jump to conclusion. And also don't put my own bias into interpreting the information. And last but not least is really to give myself um, permission to know because this, I have this, um, perhaps it's just me, but I have this idea that, you know, I know nothing, I don't know. Or, because a lot of times when I, it's not that I don't know, it's that I don't think of to know, is that I actually don't, um, 
I don't ask to know things. I don't um, have this urge to know things too much or too often. So when I give myself permission to know things, um, for example, I had a visit from an entity a couple of nights ago and um, I, I didn't really get a name and I didn't really get a very good read on that, that entity. So, so the next morning I was like, hmm, what was that? I didn't know, but the next morning I didn't, I didn't really um, have time to dwell on it. So I, I think it was maybe two or three days afterwards. That's when I actually um, got the time to sit down and give myself permission to know. So I actually just kind of zoom back to when I was um, lying in bed and this entity came in and I started to remember more of um, what was happening. And I got more information and I got more download when I <clears throat> give myself permission to know. So um, a lot of the times when we don't even give ourselves permission to know, then it's, it's like we have programs to say to, to that, you know, knowing is somehow um, beyond our ability or it's not um, spiritual or whatever story that we tell ourselves that we don't know so when we actually give ourselves permission to know and we give ourselves the time to find out what it is that we want to know then that's when the downloads would come maybe not all at once but it will come a bit at a time when it is appropriate And then it comes to the next. So what else can we do to um, get to know things? So the next one is really visual aids. Um, one of the things that I started to do in order to out more information is really um, actually it's not tarot cards it was actually doing I Ching because um, that's but whether it's I Ching or tarot cards it doesn't matter it's really a visual um, aids for it so how do I how do I know so let me just um, how do I use tarot cards? A couple of things is um, find a deck that speaks to you. Some decks, like I can use it, but it does not, I don't like it. I don't like the visual images are not very um, meaningful or not very pleasing to me. So even though I may be able to get information through them I just don't enjoy using them however there are certain decks that you will resonate with more than others this is something that if you want to use some visual aids and you want to use tarot cards then that's something that you can do um, so it's really it doesn't matter what the deck is, my, my suggestion is to pick a deck that, for me, I like to pick a deck that has a lot of visual aids in it. Why? Because I'm not one of those people who will memorize and study the instructions on, let's say, the, um, what is this card? The, what is the five of wands? For example, a tarot card with five of wands, 
what does that mean? I don't have the patience or the, um, <clears throat> the inkling to want to memorize what five of wands, six of wands, or a, a two of swords, what, what do those cards mean? Because for there are some people that actually memorize what each of the cards of, of the, the tarot means and so that they, they can read by those. I'm not one of those. I am more of an intuitive person. So what I do is, um, I would just pick a card. For example, this is this is five of wands. So this is this is the card that I picked. Can't really see it. Ah, that's too bad. Ah. So this is what that looks like. So it has a lot of of um, things on it. So that's what I like when I pick my cards. I like to pick cards that has a lot of things going on, it's colorful. And also I like the, 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 the picture and the drawings on it. And the way I do it is I don't, um, I would just look at the, the card that I draw and I would just allow my eyes to just guide me to which element within that card that actually calls my attention to it. So I don't try to find out what like the five of wands mean. I would just look at the card and say, okay, that card, what, what is the feeling that that cards give to me? Um, what are the different elements within that card that, that catches my attention? Let's say, am I more attracted to the, um, the fire element within that? Or am I more attracted to the color? Or am I more in, attracted to the, um, the wings that is kind of on, on that card? What am I being attracted to? And then ask myself. So going back to ask questions, why am I attracted to it? Why am I attracted to it? Um, because when I use visual aids, there is an event or a person that I want to get information about. So then the whatever information that I'm attracted to is um, by quantum entanglement is going to be giving me information about what it is that I want to know. So that's how I use tarot cards. And because I use tarot cards that way, um, I don't actually need tarot cards. I can do it with a book. Um, I would actually suggest picking a book that is not too thin, that has at least you know, two or 300 pages, any book. Uh, this one, it could be, you know, it could be a, um, it could be the Bible, it could be any book that, that you like, any book that when you think of the person or the events that you want to um, get more information about, allow yourself to pick the book that is most appropriate for getting information about that event. And when you take that book, then just find out how many pages that book has. And then just, um, so let's say this book has um, 376 pages. So then just give yourself, so which, which page just jumps at me? So right now I'm seeing, seeing 366 that page jumps at me, for example. And then when you go to that page, 366, then just allow yourself to just point to a particular paragraph and just read that paragraph and see if something about that paragraph resonates with you about the event or the person or whatever it is that you want to get information. It may not be the whole paragraph, it may not be the whole page, but it may be just a word 
It may be just a feeling that that paragraph gives you that is the, the information that, uh, that you need in order for you to just add another piece of that puzzle. So that's how I use um, visual aids. Or, uh, let me just actually go back to um, see what other visual aids. Um, oh, okay. Free association and dreams. Those are not technically. Oh, actually, I did not talk about a crystal ball. Okay, great. So let's talk about crystal balls. I remember in the olden days, <clears throat> um, people used crystal balls. And I was wondering, what the heck? Why crystal balls? Um, I, I did not know why. It, it actually puzzled me until I actually um, used something similar. I, I didn't use a, a crystal ball. I actually used a, a crystal, like a, a, a crystal or an I. I use a crystal, um, usually a clear crystal or something that is like um, less colorful, the better. And also um, you don't actually need a crystal ball if you don't have one. You don't need to actually go buy one because they are not that cheap actually, not anymore. You can actually use um, any object that you can think of. It could be, what can I use? I've actually used a, a, sculpt, a sculpture for this, um, but the, the sculpture you use has to be colorless or as bland as you can. And, and look at that object. So as blend as you can and look at that object. So what happens is that you are actually, when you focus your um, intention on looking at a crystal, a crystal ball, or a, let's say I, I want to look at this, this um, microphone, here because it is a white color and it's um, it's round in shape so it's fairly blend so when I look at it it's the idea of um, when you look at something after a while you you will get bored you will get bored and your mind will want, will wander off and ideas, things, feelings, events will start to come in um, or little tidbits of information will start to come in. And that's what you're trying to do is to keep your um, five senses, to keep as much of your five senses um, preoccupied and when that happens you actually free up your sixth sense to pull in information out of thin air for you so that's what crystal balls are that's why um even though crystal balls they really don't like it's colorless usually colorless and they don't even have too many uh, cracks or uh, lines in them. It's because the idea is to engage you visually so that your mind gets bored. When your mind gets bored, that's when it um, allows all the other um, six sense information to start to come in. And, and then you would sift through that just allow your your own sixth sense to sift through all the information that floats in and just 
cherry pick the ones that is most relevant for what it is that you want to know. And, and how do you know which ones to pick? For me, it's by feeling. There is a feeling that is kind of, it resonates. You, if you are not a very classation person, you may need to um, find out what is your strength and then play to your strength. So there are two other things um, I, that, that we can use as an aid. One is really dreaming. So for example, before you go to bed, you just set your intention. I want to know about this person or this event that is coming up, or I want to know more about um, why something happened in the past. I want to know the reason behind it. So those things. So set an intention and allow yourself to just go to bed and, and give yourself permission and really tell yourself, program yourself that you, I want to, I want my unconscious mind to send me a dream that will give me more um, information on that. So that actually is able to, has, has actually helped um, give more information, give more clarity on things that I don't know about. So that's another way of using an aid is to use your dream time to assist you. And the other thing is free association, which means that when I think of something, let's say what words would come to me, um, that's a free association. It could be, let's say, if I want to know something about um, an event, then I would pick words that is um, connected to that event. And then when I tap into, when I tune into each word, what is the, the thoughts, the free association that comes with that word? That's what I mean by free association. So these are all ways to um, get to know the things that are, I don't know from now. Okay, so I just want to stop here and ask for questions, comment, clarification. Any, um, any feedback, questions so far? Maybe I missed it, but uh, when you were talking about the lady where you saw the storm clouds or something, what was your final con conclusion? What was she suffering from? Okay. So the conclusion was, um, so so what I, when I ask more is so um, how to assist this, this lady to, uh, to kind of resolve her condition. Mm -hmm. And I just waited, waited for the um, answer to come. And then actually what I got was, uh, I actually saw a helicopter coming. And the helicopter kind of came and this helicopter um, pilot was actually, um, have a, a kind of a, um, a rope, a ladder being let down so that this lady, because the, well, I saw the lady in, in this ocean, so, and it's stormy, so, and then this helicopter came as a rescue. 
when she so I actually the 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 visual was that she actually climbed up there and uh, was able to get onto the um, helicopter and and like I would have thought that wow well, okay so she was rescued but actually no she, and then it more came on is that she actually started arguing with the the, the pilot and so when they argue it's like the, the helicopter even though she's out of the water but the helicopter cannot fly to any location that is going to assist her so instead of being in water she's now up in the air in the helicopter with no particular direction no nowhere to land and so I kind of asked, so what can I do to assist? So I keep asking that question. So the next thing that showed up was that, you know, they have to come to an agreement. They have to come to an agreement. And when they came to an agreement, then that's when there is a direction that they can, that the helicopter can go to and land. And that's when the um, the lady started to feel better. So energetically, that's what um, I got was that this um, there's so many things going on with this lady. That's why her back was out. It sounds like like miracle. Do you think everyone can do that? Um, <clears throat> that's the. Uh, it's actually not a miracle. That's what I'm trying to convey to you is that we all can do that. I am not special. Everyone can do that. It's just that. Um, you have to discipline. Discipline is really, the, I would say, the final piece of um, advice I would give is to really discipline yourself. Number one, discipline yourself to believe that you can do it and that it is not a miracle. It's actually something that is very natural and we all can do it. It's just that we were not um we were not taught to do it and so now you have to start to give yourself permission to do that okay you can do it with your clients as well wouldn't it be nice to be able to um when you when you are with a client to be able to find out oh, okay um what's the best way to give a massage, a face massage, or to um, work with, you know, just what's the best way to um, make sure that your client has the best um, experience. So that's something that you can do, anyone can do. Sometimes I feel I like three seconds before my client gonna say something, I feel what they're gonna say or how they feel like three seconds before they do that. But for example, uh, on an interview, so how to know if they're gonna take me or do not take me? How can I feel that? I don't feel anything. Um, so another way that I, like, if I want to know whether they're going to take you or not, then I would ask the question is, um, actually to think further ahead in time. So, because right now, 
right? Or at the time when you're having an interview, you don't know whether they're going to tick you or not because they haven't even made that decision yet. Because most likely they would be interviewing a bunch of people and then they would review, you know, and-, and yeah, I was applied to another place also. Yeah, so you don't even, the decision hasn't even been made. So don't try to get to know that, is to actually um, move forward in time at a, a time and place when it is most probable that you, that a decision has already been made. For example, let's say move forward three months or six months or nine months. Because by then you will know whether you're actually working there or not, because that most likely the, the hiring decision would have made by then. So move forward in time and then see, and then see how you feel. Do you feel happy? Do you feel like um, you are a part of that company or not? So ask those questions. That will be how I would handle it. Does that give you, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. But I also have to uh, like empty inside everything and then ask that question and imagine. Because, yeah, because you have to, because you, of course, if you like that company, you would want to be there. So you have a deeper, uh, uh, a, um, this, predisposition to want to see yourself there. So you have to just let all that go. Get to neutral before you try to get the download of something that's going to happen, let's say six months from now or nine months from now. So that's- And then by feeling if I feel happy or not, I'm gonna know, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. That will, yeah, that will be how I would do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, great. In that case, uh, Wonderful. Okay, I was just checking the chat to see if there's any questions that I missed out. Okay. So this is all I want to talk about for this evening.